So I have the uh, Google Nest doorbell camera and it continues to die in the cold air because this is New England and we get plenty of nights below 40 degrees and apparently this thing cannot charge below 40 degrees. So I've been trying all different things and of course the manufacturer is like, well we're working on it and nothing new. So what I came up with is actually a it's called a lens heater for a um, camera. Like cameras, you know, the, the 35 millimeter type cameras with the big huge honking lenses hanging off the end. Um, and these are designed to heat the lens so that it doesn't fog up the lens from being out in the cold. Because obviously if you have it in your house normally and that, that's the natural air that's inside of it, which is probably more humid, and then you bring it outside on a cold night because you want to take pictures of stars or whatever and or something in the snow in the winter time the northern lights you know you get the idea you will find that your lens is going to fog up just from the natural humidity that's inside of it so that's what these are made for they are usb powered and this one has a switch which you hit and it changes high medium and low and it has a regular old usb plug on the bottom <clears throat> like so type a and I have actually tested this in my house and found that just a regular wall wart charger will power this. So I'm about to set it up with an extension cord and I got an electrical box I'm going to add to the riser on my step to hide it all, keep it watertight and all that. If I have to I may even put some sort of a bag around this. And I think this was probably 20 bucks, 19, 20 bucks on Amazon and it's supposed to heat a lens i think on low up to 60 or something and then it has higher settings so i'm just going to try it out see how long it can run on low but as you can see what i was afraid of is if it would overlap into the picture at all and cause any distortion this is a thinner band they sell them in different thicknesses for different lenses um, but i've actually i'll show you a picture here over the video that it's taking with this installed and this maybe something it's picking up like over here and i don't know why but up here it's not seeing anything so we'll hook this up and see what how this works in the cold from now on so we've had a couple of good nights now to test the uh, heater on the doorbell so as you can see this morning it's i don't know maybe 28 or so and with the heat only on low which I don't know, I think that was supposed to maybe be 60 degrees it's supposed to maintain it at. Doorbell is doing just fine. Now this one would usually do better because it's got afternoon sun on it. And here you can see the way my front one works. It's literally, it just runs in the mail slot and it's also got a wrap. And both of them, as like I said, are doing fine. So here you can see. So that was the Back door is at 65%. Hey Google, go back. And the front door is maintaining at 95%. This is the one that always used to go dead on me. And when it gets even colder, as I showed you, both of them are on low. I can actually turn them up. I think I found the solution though, to how to keep these doorbells from going offline in the cold. And then as I showed before, I literally just have the cord plugged in to an extension cord. And I just got one of these covers. That's the end of an extension cord that runs inside the basement. And that keeps everything nice and dry. And I'm not surprised the back door is down a little bit. We've been running in and out this morning doing different things, errands and whatever. Which is much more likely to cause the doorbell to be dragged down. Because of course, since I'm standing here... It's watching me and everything's lit up and that's what drags the battery down but the front door at 95 percent actually indicates to me that it's holding now it's going to be cold for the next few days here so i'll monitor again using the app on the phone and the base station and we'll see how it does through the coldest nights with these uh, lens heaters wrapped around them so i said i'd show the live video 
so you can get an idea of the view with those things wrapped around. Let's give it a second here to connect. Okay, there we go. And the only possible place it might be seeing the wrap is just that little corner right there. That's it. And that's only because my doorbell doesn't sit flush. I actually have it angled so I can just see the end of the driveway. And on my front door, I think I have the same thing going on. Let's see here, start to connect. Obviously there's a little bit of lag involved. And there you go. And I don't think I can see the wrap on this one anywhere, even though the doorbell is angled towards that side. Um, and that's just a matter of how far in you tuck it. It, that's actually the door frame that would be black if it was the strap so just an idea of what the view looks like and what I think is a solution to the cold weather issue with the Google Nest doorbell so this morning it is a balmy I don't know 25 26 degrees and I just checked on the app the home app for Google to see how the thermo the uh, doorbells did overnight it was actually it's 22 degrees back there and it was probably colder before that and they actually came through just fine they're both recharging the front doorbell I might need to bump it up to medium as I said I left it on low as an experiment but normally that doorbell would be seriously lagging at this point and probably telling me it needed to be charged and instead it's telling me I've got, I don't know, seven days worth of use or something. And that faces a busy road in the city I live in. And there is traffic all day long that even though it doesn't trigger alerts, it's noticing all the time, which is why that's always the one that dies first. It's one of the main streets through town. So I'm uh, gonna probably bump that one up to medium and test it again, but at this point I'm calling it a success because it used to be about once a week I had to take it inside and let it warm up and then recharge it put it back out and it would die again a week later in the winter and this looks like a fix